So, so Dravet syndrome, it's a, it's a French word, uh, was for initially described by a woman physician named Charlotte Dravet, who I had the pleasure of meeting last month in Europe. And she described a syndrome which has now been very well validated, which is a, a very, very difficult disease. Uh, the, the children who suffer from Dravet syndrome typically are very healthy, appear very healthy, when, when they are first born and appear healthy through the first year of life. But then frequently, sometimes after a fever, will develop seizures. They develop epilepsy. And in this case, the epilepsy is very severe. It can last for quite a while. It can take multiple different forms. And it's very difficult to treat. And in fact, more than 90% of patients with Dravet syndrome do not have adequate control given the currently available anti-epileptic drugs. So it, it is really a, a disease that does not have good treatment options. The seizures are obviously very disturbing both to those who suffer from them as well as the family members and others who observe them. But there are also other significant comorbidities, we call them, of the disease. That means that there are other problems that happen with the disease. One of them is that the, the children who have this have significant intellectual disability. So although they may be functioning at a fully normal level in terms of their cognition, in terms of their, their brain function, within several years after they first develop the disease, many of them have significantly limited intellectual functioning. And that's, of course, a, a very devastating outcome for a family. They also develop difficulty walking with their gait, and many of them end up in a wheelchair by the time they're teenagers. And the worst part of the disease is actually that one out of five people with Dravet syndrome uh, die prematurely, frequently before they even reach their teenage years. And the treatments that are available for Dravet syndrome right now, which are anti-epileptic drugs that have been available now for, for many years, are able to suppress the seizures somewhat. They do not treat any of these other comorbidities. So the, the intellectual decline, the difficulty walking, the, the risk of death, all of those are not addressed by the currently available anti-epileptic drugs. Now these anti-convulsive drugs, they work by primarily by suppressing brain activity, and that's how they suppress the, the seizures. But of course, then they're really acting as a toxin to the brain, because they are causing the brain not to function normally. So even though these, these are what are the only available medications for people with Dravet syndrome, they really do not adequately address the problem. And there is certainly a need for therapies that are directed specifically to the cause of Dravet syndrome. We do know what the cause of Dravet syndrome is. There is a gene called SCN1A that is mutated. It's changed from normal. And when that is changed, it causes a protein called NAV1.1, which is a component of a sodium channel. And that sodium channel allows for the back and forth flow of sodium, which is a, a signaling factor for the cells and helps the cells function. When that is at a lower level than normal, that NAV1.1 protein, then the channel does not function adequately. These channels where NAV1.1 is present are present in nerve cells especially. And so when that channel does not function well, then the nerve cells don't function well, and that's where the predisposition for seizure happens. That's where the decline in, in intellectual functioning happens, and that's how the effects on both, uh, on, the, on the walking as well, can, can be manifest. So we do know the basis for the disease, <coughs> But the currently available therapies do not address this deficiency of the NAV1.1 protein. And so the field is the, the physicians who are treating these patients, the families, the, the, the children themselves, 
are really looking for new treatments that are directed specifically at that base cause of the disease.